Thank you. Uh, let's dive right in. So account abstraction, why should you care about it? It's a valid question, right? We're here at a Web3 conference. Millions of users use Web3 every month. We've got some pretty good adoption. But the question still remains, how do we reach mainstream adoption? And I think that's the really important question if this technology is going to make it. When I ask this question, a lot of the answers I get have a similar theme to them, and that's that we need to focus on user experience and making this easier for the average user. And that's something you hear me say over and over again during this talk is user experience and easier for the average user. When we think about blockchain technology, I have a question for all of y'all. How many of you were slightly overwhelmed the first time that you interacted with Web3? Like, raise your hand. Like, take a look around. This is the developer stage, right? Like, that's a lot of hands, and that is the problem. If you were put into your car the first time you're learning to drive and you're met with this, which is a real car from like the 80s, I don't even know what they were thinking, but if that was your experience, like, I don't think I'd be driving now at least, right? If that was my first experience. And I feel like that is a good representation of what it feels like to be a blockchain user, like a Web3 user right now, right? You, you're met with all of these different friction points. And thinking about the first time you interacted with it, like, let's think for a second about what it's like to be a new user today. Put yourselves in those shoes, right? What's the first thing that you have to do to interact with the blockchain? You have to get a wallet. Right? So one step, get a wallet. And we've come a long way. There's a lot of diversity and options when it comes to wallets, which is good, but also a friction point, right? Because now we have to pick a wallet. And MetaMask is pretty popular, so I think I'll go with that option. But somebody mentioned something about a hardware wallet if I want things to be really secure. It's so like already I've got this decision where I need to pick between MetaMask and this hardware wallet thing, and then like we're not normal people. like. We expect people to take these 24 magical words and then carve them into metal and like hide these metal things around those seed phrase words, right? That's what we do, right? Is we, we do all these weird things. And if you think about the average internet user, that's not normal. That's a lot of work and that's hard. And we haven't even actually done anything with the blockchain yet, right? We're just talking about creating a wallet. And this is the problem that we have to solve if Web3 is going to be successful. Account abstraction can be that solution. So if we think about applications that have had wide adoption, uh, social media, pretty wide adoption, meta, Instagram, billions of active users, right? This is where we're looking to get to is that mass adoption. Think about the average Instagram user. Do you think Instagram would be as popular if in order to look at your friend's photos, you had to figure out what a wallet was? You had to create a wallet. You had to deal with a seed phrase. Not to mention, you had to exchange fiat for cryptocurrency. Like, that's a whole nother problem. I don't think Instagram would have nearly the adoption that it does. And again, we're developers. It's our job to make good user experiences. Right now, we frankly don't have that. We need to look at stuff like account abstraction to make those user experiences easier, remove that friction. Because Web3 is complicated. And I think for being honest, it's a little bit scary right now. So what is account abstraction? Uh, you know, I was looking for a Picasso where he drew a car, but you know, a little bit before his, or after his time with the car. Account abstraction is we take complexities, we abstract them away, and hide them from the users. We make things as simple as possible, right? Like this is a very simplistic drawing of a car, but you can still recognize it as a car. All the complexities have been removed away. And everything that's complex about it is gone. And that's our job as developers, is to abstract away the hard parts from our users. I like to think of it as user experience. So thinking about cars, uh, account abstraction does come with a trade-off in that as we make things simpler, sometimes we lose that direct connection. Right? I like to think of it like between a manual and an automatic vehicle. Like I love driving a manual car. It's fantastic. You have that control, that interaction right with the car. but that comes at the cost of it's a lot more complex to learn how to drive a manual. And you know, if you're sitting in bumper and bumper traffic for hours on end, you're going to be hating life. Uh, when we think about account abstraction and removing anything that's complex, it's more like an automatic, right? If you think about most drivers, they're not caring about those intricacies of the car. They want to get from point A 
to point B as easy as possible. If self-driving cars become a thing, like they'll be down for that, right? Like just take me there and let's go. Another question. We're here at a Web3 conference. We're the developers. Who currently is frustrated occasionally with the complexities of things like gas fees, transaction orders? Anybody? Yeah, like look around. Again, we're the ones out here on the bleeding edge and we're frustrated by this, right? Average internet user. That's a problem. They're just gonna drop it because it's too hard to begin with. So we have user experience. We also have flexibility when it comes with account abstraction. So account abstraction allows you to create a smart contract wallet. So instead of a traditional wallet, you have a smart contract that acts as your wallet. That gives you flexibility. You can customize it, right? You can be prepared for anything. Um, using account abstraction, you can create different methods of dealing with security, dealing with fees, and dealing with nonce. So we'll talk about those in a moment. But instead of relying solely on your private keys, your smart contract wallet can have more security. So we talk about security. What does that look like? We have the opportunity to do things like time-locked withdrawals from your account. Uh, you can have various modes of verification when it comes to signing and ensuring that it's not just a stolen key. And I think that's big. So essentially, account abstraction isn't just a user-centric upgrade, or a technical upgrade, sorry, it's a user-centric upgrade, right, that's focusing on user experience and how we actually make Web3 easier for people to use. Uh, one of the key features is signature abstraction. Uh, EOAs, externally owned accounts, wallets, rely solely on private keys. And that works pretty well most of the time until it doesn't. Again, I'm going to ask a question, raise hands. How many people in here have heard of somebody who's gotten scammed? Like, read about it, know of somebody? Like, yeah, pretty much everybody. And that is the narrative that this space has, right? Is that it's so easy to lose everything, and it's dangerous, it's scary. When we think about account abstraction and those smart contract wallets, they enable you to not just rely on your EOA, so that one private key, to secure your account. And that is big because that makes it feel safer and more secure for users. And what's our job as developers? To make it easier for users, right? The other thing, and I'm sure a lot of you have heard about this, the guy who threw away the wrong hard drive that had 8,000 Bitcoins on it, he's currently still looking for it, like mining through a trash dump. That's called an irrevocable loss or irrecoverable loss. Account abstraction helps prevent that. If you lose your one magical seed phrase or private key, you don't necessarily lose everything when we have account abstraction. And again, we're thinking about the average user, right? Even myself, like it scares me to think that I could like lose a piece of information and lose everything. That's not what people are used to, right? Like if I were to lose my credit card right now, it's no big deal. I don't lose everything. So having that ability to not have irrecoverable losses is a huge deal. So signature abstraction, aims to solve a lot of these problems. And it opens up several exciting possibilities, the first of which is transaction limits. So we can put limits on things like spending from a wallet. Uh, if we want to put additional layers of security above a certain threshold when it comes to that spending, we can do that as well. So with smart contract wallets, your wallet becomes programmable, right? So you can set up what you want it to do. The next thing is that you can have multi-party approvals. So if you have a smart contract wallet, you can have uh, approvals that require your friends, your family, or even just another device you have, like multi-factor authentication, to approve that transaction. This starts to give a sense of security to our users, right? Because it's not just that uh, full responsibility on them. And additionally, we have the ability to rotate or revoke the keys as well when it comes to the smart contract wallets. So if a key were to be lost, similar to a credit card, right? If you lost your credit card today, you call your credit card company and you say, hey, I lost my card. They say, no problem. We're going to freeze your account and issue a new card. You can do that with a smart contract wallet. You can pause it so it can't do any transactions and issue a new key in case a key got compromised. And that's massive. Again, it makes things easier. It makes it where it feels safer for users and actually is safer for users. And it helps bring it to an experience that they're familiar with. Next, we're going to talk about fee abstraction. Uh, when it comes to transactions, every transaction requires a gas fee, 
right? That is not normal when we're talking about Web 2, what people are used to. That's kind of strange. You know, you want to post on Twitter and suddenly you have to pay for it every time? Well, maybe that might be normal now that it's X, right, where you have to start paying for a lot more stuff. But anyway, when you're interacting with the websites, you're not used to having to pay for every transaction. Fee abstraction lets you create gasless transactions. And I know some of you are thinking, like, gasless? I don't have to pay gas? Sweet. They're not really gasless. It's more of a sponsored transaction where your application can pay the gas for your users. But now we're starting to make a interaction with an application that feels more normal, right? Because they can do something, and they don't even have to understand the concept of gas. They don't have to have found a way to get fiat into crypto to pay for that gas. That's massive. Like, that user experience just leveled up, right? But maybe you don't want to pay for all of their transactions. You can also do what are called non-native gas fees as well. So that crazy looking beaver thing in the middle, I'm from Texas, that's Bucky. That's a pretty popular uh, gas chain. So it's not native to here by any means. And non-native gas fees means that you can have your users pay in um, ERC-20 tokens. And then within your application, you can convert it and pay the gas fee natively for them. Right, so that just is removing another friction point. Not quite as friction-free as gasless transactions, but it's a step in the right direction. And then finally, what I think is the biggest change is with fee abstraction and these smart contract wallets, you can have social logins. Like That looks like Web 2 to me. Right? If we combine that with gasless transactions, you could have an experience that a user has no idea they're even using Web 3. And that's, like, that's the dream. There is no difference from their perspective. They didn't have to learn anything new. They don't have to worry about anything. And they get the benefits behind the scenes of Web3. Like, I think that's massive. Your application could spin up a smart contract wallet for your user when they sign in and use those gasless transactions. The next thing that we're going to talk about is nonce abstraction. So nonce is basically just a transaction counter, right? So every transaction that you do on the blockchain has a nonce associated with it. It's just keeping track of how many transactions you've done. Uh, it works pretty well most of the time, except for who in here has had a stuck transaction? That's a lot of hands again, right? Um, when it comes to stuck transactions, they're a problem because the way that nonce works currently is first in, first out. So we have to wait for that stuck transaction, and like there's going to be traffic piling up behind them, right? We're on a single lane road. With nonce abstraction, you can have multiple transactions that process simultaneously. So we're moving from this single lane road to a super highway. If we have one that's slow, and we have a transaction that's kind of not going through, it doesn't mean that everything stops in our application or our wallet, our smart contract wallet, and that's huge. The other thing that we get with nonce abstraction is uh, transaction batching. So if we think about something like Uniswap right now, right? So in Uniswap, you need to uh, approve the token, you need to deposit tokens, and then you need to borrow tokens. And those are each separate transactions, right? But what you're actually doing is you're just interacting with Uniswap. It should be one transaction. With transaction batching, that can be one transaction. All of those transactions can be combined together. This makes a lot more sense from a user experience, right? I want to interact with Uniswap. I sign one transaction because I did the thing. Instead of click and sign and approve, and I had to pay gas for that, and I have to pay gas for this and this too. Like, if that's your first experience with Web3, you know, it might be pretty poor because you're saying, I have to, every time I click on something, I have to pay a gas fee? What? So non abstraction gives us that benefit as well. So this was a short talk just trying to express to you how we as developers can do our job of making Web3 a more user-friendly place and making the experience better for users. Hopefully, this has given you a little bit of interest in account abstraction. You will take what you've learned a little bit here and expand it uh, and start looking at how to make Web3 more user-friendly so that we can get that mass adoption. Because without that, I don't see this going anywhere. And that kind of scares me because there's a lot of power and benefit in Web3. And so we need to reach mass adoption. We talked about signature abstraction, fee abstraction, and non-subtraction, and how those can benefit. And I hope that we as developers can create a paradigm shift in Web3 and lower the barrier entry and make blockchain technology more accessible to the average internet user.
If you're interested in this, there are a few different companies that have SDKs that are probably the easiest and fastest place to get started. We have Biconomy, Alchemy, and ThirdWeb. Uh, there will also be a talk tomorrow afternoon in this room. Kira will be giving it. She's actually here in the audience if you have questions for her right there. Uh, and she'll teach you more about it if you're interested in it. Hopefully you are. I'll just end with Web3 shouldn't be hard, and it is. If it's going to be successful, it can't be hard. So let's make it better. Thank you. <laughs>